school, moved around a lot. I actually moved here after being to seven different states already. My dad wasn't in the military, but he would buy up a little land. Um, we'd clean it up and we'd move again. Um, I thought I was gonna stay in Arkansas for good and we found an opportunity uh, with some land in Missouri and so eventually moved there. Um, and I'm glad I've had a great life, great future. Um, I'm 26 years old. Um, for those of you who don't know, I graduated in 2015. So a little bit older than you guys, but wanted to just tell you about who I am. And it's not just a fighter, right? That's who you guys think I am. You see the muscles, you see all that, and you're like, wow, she's a big popular figure. And to me, that's not who I am, right? I don't really see myself as a celebrity. I don't see myself as any of those things. Um, I see myself as a wife. I see myself as a daughter. I see myself as a sister. Um, I'm a Christian above all things, and I try to be that above all things. You guys know me mainly as a fighter. Um, I'm also an artist. So I've drawn people, I've drawn animals, I do all kinds of things like that. I've been doing that since I was 11 years old, selling them. Um, some of people even here have my sketches in their homes. I guarantee some of the teachers do and stuff of that nature. Um, and I also work for Hershey. So even though I'm a full-time fighter and I full-time train, I also have a full-time job, right, for the Hershey company, the chocolate company, right? Um, I don't get free chocolate, so that's one of the things I don't have to worry about, thank goodness, or I might not be as skinny as I am. Um, but I do work for them as a statistician. So I work on their media marketing team, and I do a lot of the math behind the scenes that gives you guys the ads that you see on TV, on Instagram, Facebook, things of that nature. So I used to contract for them, now I work full time. Um, so you can do more than one thing at once, right? I remember kids in school, even at your guys' age, I remember being like, well, I'm working and going to school, and they're like, oh no, I'm too busy for that. Listen, I was a full-time athlete, a full-time student, and I had a full-time job the entire time I went through college, and I still do to this day other than the school part. Um, so you guys can do a lot of things. You just have to put dedication to it, right? You might be like, well, I'm not good at school, I'm not good at this. You can be good at anything if you put your mind to it. At least try your hardest, and that's what matters the most, right? It doesn't matter if you're the best scholar in the world. Um, my siblings, unfortunately, didn't do as well at school as me. They made A's, B's, they had some C's, right? Not a big deal. They're still very successful now, and they're 19, 20 years old, and they're working their best to have a great career ahead of them. Um, but who was I? Okay, who I am and who I was are two very different things. We get to determine every single day who we're going to be. And you might say, "Well, I was born into this. I have this situation ahead of me. I didn't come from a rich family like you did. I didn't come from. I didn't wasn't born like you were." Any My dad ended up being very well off, but he grew up very poor. Um, his family, most of them were in and out of jail all the time. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I had COVID a couple weeks ago, so my lungs are suffering, okay? So I'll do my best to last all these minutes without coughing and stuff. But he did not grow up rich. He didn't grow up well off. I didn't grow up rich and well off. We had quite a bit of land, but we lived very poor because all of our investment went into the property so that we could have a successful future, not so much when we were young, right? I grew up not affording the boxing gloves and stuff that you guys see on the screen. I have my own company now where I sell boxing gloves. I give a lot of them away, try to try to support auctions here and there that are for charities, especially for human trafficking and stuff of that nature. But when I was younger, I didn't have boxing gloves. I couldn't afford new ones. I was the one in the gym that had like the little fake leather peeling off all over the floor and we had to sweep it up every day, right? Because I was too busy trying to make my life happen, too busy trying to make other things happen, have a car that ran stuff like that to be able to get back and forth from work. But when I was young, when I was sitting in these seats just like you guys are, I was bullied a lot. I was the awkward kid that set the lunch table all by myself because I was a kid, right? I was a new student. I brought my own lunch to school every day, which already makes you weird. You guys know how it goes, right? So I sat there, I ate my lunch by myself. I was the weird kid who was pretty quiet. I was smart, but that just made me a nerd, right? I wasn't all muscular and stuff. I'll show you guys in a second. I actually ran cross cross country and track for the school. Um, and eventually, throughout high school, once I moved from here, I started wrestling, started jujitsu, and that's when I started fighting. So I didn't start super young. But I did have a background at home. I learned to defend myself a little bit. Did my best not to get in fights and things of that nature. So um, didn't wasn't a bad kid, but I got bullied a lot, right? And you guys are gonna laugh right now, but even in middle school and in this high school right here, people called me Manrick instead of Maverick, right? especially the girls, because girls are mean. Boys are mean too, right? And girls were mean because I was the kid that was 12 years old that didn't shave my legs yet, right? And they were like, oh, you, you look like a man because you have muscles. Um, and I, I always had muscles. I worked really hard when I was a kid. Worked 
really hard on the farm that we had, built fence from the age of eight years old on, uh, knew how to do all that stuff. So who was I? I was a kid just like you guys. I wasn't the fighter that I am right now, that you guys think I am, and see, you guys can go be anything that you wanna be, all right? It's me right in the middle. I'm on the track team, I'm done praying up there, to some different meets. You guys might recognize some people on here. I know Don Salmon's in some of these, Jennifer Laird, um, Emily Black, Emily Richardson. There's a few different people who are on the screen that you guys might recognize, okay? And I ran track, I ran cross country with them. We did pretty well as a team. Um, and I will say being on that team helped me a lot to develop as a human, to develop knowing that I needed support systems, knowing that everything you do is teamwork. I'm in a very individual sport, right? You guys are like, well, you, you fight on your own. Yeah, but I have training partners. I have coaches that help me get there. I have a family who I lean on for support. I have friends that I lean on for support. I have teachers like Ms. Hill over here who help me get to where I am. I give them a lot of credit for being that inspiration that I had when I was young, for being like, well, you can go do this. You can really push yourself and go be whatever you wanna be. And those people that have those expectations for you way up here, and you're like, oh, they just want me to do better. They're always on my butt about this. They always want me to do better. I'm never good enough. Those are the people you need to keep in your circle. And those are the people who actually care about you, okay? When somebody's like, oh, do whatever you want, I'll still love you. Not love, but like you, I'll still support you. Those aren't necessarily always your people, right? Because they're not holding you to a standard. They're saying, I don't care if you go to jail. I don't care if you end up getting an overdose. I don't care if you don't make it anywhere in life, right? Those aren't your people. Find yourself a good group of people who support you doing the right things, who hold standards for you, who make sure you have a code, right? A moral value code. Something that stands you apart from all the people that you see that don't make it in life. So I was gonna go on and tell you guys about my own dreams. I didn't always think I was gonna be a fighter. I was never one of those kids that was like, I'm gonna be a professional athlete when I get older. Okay, I was a very practical kid. I was like, I'm good at math, I'm good at school stuff. I'm gonna go to school and I'm gonna be a lawyer. I'm gonna go be an accountant. I was like, I probably won't make it to be a lawyer because I don't have enough money to pay for law school, all right? I was like, I'm gonna be an accountant. And then I shadowed somebody. I had a job shadowing thing and I went to him and I was like, this is the most boring job I have ever seen in my life, all right? And I was like, I'm not gonna do that, all right? And I went on, I waitressed from the age of 16 to 22. And then I finally stopped, and the day I quit, I was like, I will never go back, never ever. And I haven't so far, hopefully never, right? But I was gonna tell you guys, guess what? You still don't know what you're gonna be. Some of you guys might be like, I know what I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go be a welder, or I'm gonna go to college, and I'm gonna go be a nurse. And it's like, that's not all you're gonna be. You guys remember earlier, I don't identify myself based on my occupation. When I walk up to somebody, I don't say, hi, I'm Miranda Maverick, UFC fighter. Like, that's lame, okay, I don't do that. I walk up to them and I tell them, I live here, my family does this. I try to show them the values that I have as a person. Unless, of course, I'm in the UFC and somebody is like, what do you, you know, you're at a seminar or something, what do you do? Are you teaching this? I'm like, well, I'm a UFC fighter, that's why I'm here teaching this MMA seminar. But that's not who you guys are, you aren't your occupations. Try to be who you want yourself to be. Are you the person people trust to come with for secrets? Are you the person that people trust to come get advice from you? Or are you the person that they go, well, if I wanna get into some trouble, I go to this guy, he's fine, right? That's not who you wanna be, especially not when you're older, when you have other generations looking at you. You don't wanna look back and say, that was my prime time in high school, that's the best I ever was in high school. Don't let that happen. Well, that was, I didn't do the second part. A lot of people think I have my life together, right? You're like, wow, you're really successful, you've got all this stuff going on. You've gotta be willing to be better every single day, okay? I'm not as good as I was before, and sometimes in a lot of ways I'm not as good as I once was, right? But I do my best, I do my best to be a better person every day. I try to help those that are in need when I can. And I, people are like, well, why don't you give to this charity? Why don't you just give all your money away if you're all this goody two-shoes and stuff? And it's like, well, I'm trying to make myself a success enough to where I can go do that one day. But I'm gonna take care of my inner circle first, right? I'm gonna help my family first with stuff. I'm gonna make sure I'm on my own two feet. They always tell you if you've uh, been on an airplane, right? They're like, put on your own oxygen mask before you help others. And that's kind of how I see it in life too, right? Help yourself, make sure you're on your own two feet, help those closest around you, and then from there, help everyone else, right? And I try my best to do that. So you guys are not the best you're gonna be. Try your best in everything that you do so that you can make a few
future for yourselves to where you can say, no, today is the best that I am. And tomorrow I'll be even better. And that's my goal as well, right? Tomorrow, I hope I'm able to come to you guys and say, yeah, I've gotten, you know, 0.1% better today. And keep going from there. But the goal is not necessarily to be in a great career or anything like that, but to jump for the opportunities that you have in front of you. God puts tons of opportunities in front of me all the time. And a lot of them, I've flat out been like, no, I don't want that one. You know? I don't want to go down that road. That looks too hard. And he'll be like, all right, fine. And so I'll go over here on the road he doesn't want me on. I'm walking, I'll just get thumped in the head. And I'm like, okay, fine. I'll go over to this road, right? And it's like sometimes we get pushed in the wrong direction, the wrong direction, the wrong direction by our own decisions. And eventually you find yourself going, where am I at? I'm lost, right? Find the right road and pursue it with a passion, right? It's not just that I do UFC. It's not like, oh, she was talented. She's got muscles, so she's great at fighting. It's not how it works, guys. It's not how it works. I know plenty of girls that can whoop my butt as far as strength goes. I know plenty of girls who have better skills than me at certain things, and guys for sure, right? But I don't compete with the guys, so I don't pay attention to that as much. But I see plenty of girls that have better skills, they have better strength, they have better a lot of things, but what they don't have is the passion that I have. I go into the training room every single day, and I'm the best one in that room. I might not be able to beat everyone in that room, but I'm working harder than them. I'm putting everything I have into what I do. The reason why is because I know what it's going to get me. Being a UFC fighter isn't everything I am, and it's not the end for me. I'm not like, oh, once I make it to be a world champion, that's going to be all I do in life. That's not the case. It's simply a means to an end for me. It's one thing to get me another step in life, right? And after I get that step, I'm going to find another dream to pursue, and another dream to pursue. You guys jump at it with passion. It's not about being the best in the world for me, and it should be for you guys about being the best at whatever you're doing right there. But then to be the best parent that you can one day, the best child that you can. Um, you know, and sometimes we get blessed with parents that are amazing and great. Sometimes we get blessed with parents that aren't so great, right? And sometimes it's to push us in certain directions, or maybe to be a better parent ourselves, or maybe to be better people ourselves, or maybe to use that as an example to show other people what you can do no matter the circumstances. Don't use those things as crutches. Don't use them as excuses. It's like, well, I was born in Walden. There aren't that great of jobs here. Or, you know, I don't know too many famous people around here. You're probably in a big city or something like that. But no, I chose to go where I did for the purpose of what I did. But I'm getting ready to move right back to a little bitty small town in the country and live with my family. That's my ultimate goal. You guys got to figure out what yours is. So there will always be people who stand in the way of whatever that dream is for you, right? But a lot of the times, it's yourself. In fact, I would say 99% of the times, it's you who stands in the way of your own dreams. With your own excuses, your own problems, your own, well, I want this thing. It's not really what you want. It's just what society tells you you want. Or maybe it's not really what you want, but it's what your brain thinks you want because of your desire right there for a few seconds. Did you really want to drink and be sick and throw up in the morning? Did you really want to go and get a D in your class because you've stayed up the last night and watched movies all night? Probably not, but you wanted to watch that movie right then, right? You wanted to drink right then because that's what all the buddies were doing, right? Don't do that. Do what's going to make the future for yourself. Delay gratification for something that's a lot greater, right? Be responsible. Have some responsibility for yourself. Don't expect everybody else to make you that responsible. I'm sure your teachers and stuff, a lot of them have told you, be quiet, do this, do that. Guess what? They won't be telling you what to do if you're doing it yourself already. I've learned that a lot. If you're already doing what's right, no one will have to tell you what to do. If you want to be a rebel, why don't you be the right rebel? Why don't you do it to the point you're like, no, no, you don't get to tell me to do that because I'm already doing it so good, you can't fix it. That should be your goal. Not to have people tell you stuff and you be like, hey, I'm the cool kid because the coach, uh, the coach or the teacher told me to shut up 10 times today in class. It's not cool. That's stupid. Maybe the other stupid kids think that it's cool. It's not. All right? Especially not when you go to get a job and your boss tells you to shut up 10 times and now you're fired. Right? Or one day when you have kids and you're like, man, they're just like me. Maybe you should have said that. Um, I've had hard times that I don't get to avoid. We don't get to choose our circumstances all the time, but we get to choose how we react to those circumstances. For me, I've had a lot of people stand in the way of my dreams. I've had people say, you're too young to do that. 
you're way too young to be a fighter already. You're trying to turn professional at 19 years old? Absolutely not. Nobody's gonna wanna take you. And I was like, well, we'll find out, right? And guess what, before I turned 19 years old, I'm the one that got a call asking me to turn professional. I didn't have to beg them for anything because I had worked so hard to get there. Nobody knew my age, they didn't care. They just see your resume and they go, come work for me, right? Because that's what you want it to be like. Try your best to point people and get to tell you you can't do things that way. I got told I was too young. I got told I was a girl. I shouldn't be going to the gym that I went to because there were no other girls that trained there. We don't want you here. And I was like, yeah, I know. I know. I'm gonna get my butt whooped. I'll be the nail. We call it the hammer and the nail in my sport, right? You get to be the hammer sometimes to beat people up, and other times you get beat up, right? And I've been beat up plenty. And if you guys look up my record, I'm not undefeated. I'm not always amazing like you guys see on the video. I'm not always winning and beating people up and choking them out. Sometimes I'm the one having that happen to me, right? And it really stinks when it happens, and I think my whole life's going down the drain when it happens. So I get up, dust myself back up, go to the gym, work harder, train harder, reanalyze my own brain, right, and go, man, I did something wrong. Let me go figure out what it was, and let me get better the next time. I've had many, many different setbacks. I'm only 26 years old, and I've had so many surgeries, probably more than a lot of the teachers and stuff in this room that are older. I've had a lot of setbacks that made me think my whole life was over, and beyond anything else, it taught me not to take life for granted. It taught me not to take my career for granted. It told me not to take my opportunities for granted, and beyond anything else, it taught me not to keep certain people and take them for granted. Right? I have people that took care of me day and night when I had a knee surgery because I didn't just have, oh, my ACL's torn and it's hurt. I had like a knee shattering experience to where I was just bawling and screaming in the middle of my gym. And it happened to be a visitor day. So we had like 20 guys from other gyms coming in trying to impress during my sparring and my training. And here I am bawling like a little baby in the middle of class screaming, right? Because I ended up getting my ACL torn, MCL, PCL, LCL, medial meniscus, and lateral meniscus all at the same time. I tried to stand after about three days and I just fell down because my knee wouldn't hold me. Very painful experience. Finally got surgery on it, emergency surgery, and was able to fight within a year. So that was amazing. Um, I bless God for that. A lot of people were like, you won't walk right. Your foot's probably going to be crooked for a while because my knee had a lot of problems after it. And it still clicks, you know. Can't do a squat without it hurts a little bit. But I do it what I do at my level, even with a messed up knee. And you guys can do the same thing with other problems in life. Okay? A lot of us have problems where we're like, nah, I can't do that anymore. I'm too old, or I'm too heavy, or I'm too this. So do what you want to do within certain parameters. I had retina surgery. That was the worst day of my life. Okay? I found out two days before I was going to make my UFC debut. Raise your hand if you know what the UFC is, like if you watched it before. All right. So that's a big deal, right? Compared to football, is the NFL, is what MMA is to the UFC. And to me, I was like, I'm almost there. They call me for a short notice fight. Two days away from fighting, and I have to go get my eyes checked for an eye exam for the UFC. And they said, you can't fight, your retinas are torn. I was like, what, what are you talking about? I don't have that big an eye problem. Like, I can't see everything, but I don't have like, trouble seeing. And they're like, oh, both of your eyes are torn. Focus in your periphery. And I noticed that I couldn't really see very well in my periphery. They were like little bugs flying around in my peripheral vision. And they told me I couldn't fly. They told me I'd never be able to have kids again. They told me I could never do anything physical again that required pressure. Because the surgery they were gonna do was to put an air bubble behind my eye. And if there was ever enough pressure for it to go out, I'd be blind. And they told me every time I had to redo the surgery it was another 5% chance I'd never see again for the rest of my life. And both eyes, not one retina surgery, both eye surgeries. And I was just upset, you know? Same year to mental collapse. I had suicidal thoughts, I had a lot of mental problems those months or two, and I finally figured out, which came with a lot of reading and a lot of praying and a lot of talking to people that I trusted, and I was like, that's not my worth. My worth is not just MMA fighting. My worth isn't just all these things that require physical activity. But I thought to myself, well, my family lives on a farm. How am I ever gonna do anything physical? Again, I wanna have children. I don't wanna not be a parent just because I had a eye surgery, like that sucks, I'd rather go blind. You know, I don't want to not ever fly because I can't have this. And for a long time, it was terrible for me. And I went to one surgeon, two surgeons, three surgeons, and the fourth surgeon said, I can do this, I have a different kind of surgery, I've done it on children before, because the average patient for retina surgery is 80 years old. But I had mine from trauma, from getting hit, from getting poked in the eyes. 
And they were like, we can do it. And I think I can get you back to fighting. And I was like, done, done deal. Had my first eye surgery the year that I turned 22 years old. And it was the day of my birthday too. So I turned 22 on the first day I had a retina surgery. And then my, also grad school. Funny story with grad school, you guys aren't gonna believe this. So I have a little bit of uh, bad feelings towards academia for a while. You know, a couple of years I was like, can't see in academia. I went to grad school, worked really hard, got a full ride for my PhD. Got a full ride for undergrad first, and I got a full ride for my PhD. I worked for them through school, and I ended up only getting my master's. And that was because they didn't believe that I could have a job and work and work for them at the same time. And they said, we don't, we don't see any other students being able to do that, and we don't think you are either. We think you're cheating. So I was like, wow, all right. They didn't say cheating. They didn't say those words. They just said, we haven't even seen anybody else do it, and we don't know how you're doing it, but we don't see how it's possible that you're doing it legally. And I said, what does that mean? And they were like, well, I mean, we're teachers, and we went through grad school, and we never were able to do that, and we don't see how it's possible. And I was like, well, I don't have a social life, one. Right? I didn't go to bars, I didn't hang out, I didn't play with my friends, I didn't have any of that. I, I worked, and I worked, and I worked. And I stayed away from even my family for a while so that I could pursue my, my education. And so they didn't believe that I could do it, and they basically had a little review board. All of a sudden, they just told me to hop on this call. I was supposed to be talking to my professor, which in grad school, you usually have a key professor that you go to, right? And I thought I was gonna hop on the call with him, and he's like, you mind if I bring a couple other people on this call? I was like, I do mind, but sure. And he's like, we're doing your student review for this semester. I was like, all right, no problem. Gets on there, and they basically were like, here's the two choices. You can either, pursue your PhD, or you can pursue fighting. You're quitting one of them. And I was like, you don't get to make that decision. They're like, we do, because you work for us. And technically, we're allowed to say that if we think you're not prioritizing, we can cut you from this program. And I said, all right, well, I'm young. MMA is a young sport, okay? I can't do MMA when I'm 50 years old. I was like, I'm done with school then, I guess. I can go somewhere else and get schooling if I really need to. And amusingly, I got offered the job at Hershey three days before this happened to me. And at the time, I was like, I'm not gonna go take a job, I'm busy with school. Excuse me. <clears throat> school, and I'm busy with training. I have no reason to take a job. Then that happened to me. I chose MMA, so I quit school. And I was like, hey, you got that job still available for me? And he was like, I do, you want it? I was about to offer it to somebody else. I was like, please, I would really like that job. And he was like, all right, come work for us. And so that's kind of my history with school. I moved away from that school, moved out to Denver where I'm based at now, where there's a lot of MMA fighters, a high population of athletes out there, doing the best that I've ever done in my career, and it ended up being just an absolute blessing for me. But it was another one of those times where I was trying to walk this way, in fact, run that way, and God just like snapped the whip and I fell on the ground and was like, okay, fine, I'll go this way, right? And I should have just went in that path in the first place. Choose the opportunities that you pick, follow the opportunities that you have. Try your best not to say no if it looks good for the future. Not right then, but delayed gratification. Success, I wanna to talk to you guys about that. Because obviously, you guys probably think I'm successful. I feel like I'm successful in a lot of ways in life. I'm still growing in many ways. But success to me isn't how much money I make. Success to me isn't necessarily like, oh, people know me, I'm popular. People think I have big muscles, like whatever it is, right? Success to me is being a good human being. Success to me, is being able to look back and say, I put a smile on people's face. I made people's lives better. If you met me, I hope it wasn't a detriment. And to those of you who did know me when I was in middle school, when I was in high school, even two weeks ago, if I did something bad to them, I hope that they see now I'm at least trying to improve. Right? And you guys should be the same way. You shouldn't be proud of being mean to people. I have plenty of, plenty of bullies when I was in middle school and high school. And you know what? At least three people used to sit in those chairs and message me in the last week. And then like, hey, you remember me? We were friends in high school. I was like, yeah, I remember you, and we were not friends in high school. You were a jerk to me in high school. And you should be apologizing to me for what you did to me in high school. But they don't. And that's not their problem, it's my problem. And I learned to go, okay, that's who that person is. I need to learn to forgive. Not gonna forget though, I don't believe in that phrase. Forgive and forget is different than forgive and move on, hope that that person does better. Right, but you need to remember so that you can learn from it. Success, via Merriam-Webster de definitions, is a degree or measure of succeeding. Satisfactory completion of something or the gaining of wealth, respect, or fame. Now respect I'm okay with, the rest of the stuff, I don't know if that's direct definitions of what success should be. 
Have you guys ever heard of the phrase, uh, nine tenths of reality is perception, right? So perception is nine tenths of reality. And I truly believe that. What you guys perceive me as is what your reality will be, right? Who I am to you on this stage today is who you're gonna know me to be. You're not gonna be like, many of you at least aren't gonna be like, no, I'm gonna go find out more about her personal life, figure out exactly who she is to herself. You're just gonna see what social media says about me. You're gonna see what this thing says about me. You're gonna see what I'm saying about myself and you're gonna take that as reality. I don't get to say, well, I'm just playing who I am. They don't really know who I am. No, that's who people know you as. That's who you get represented as. That's who you are, whether you like it or not. So be who you want to be, don't be who you think is cool. I don't think the little or the guy that's not struggling. I'm gonna have to walk back over here. All right, there's a lot of different phrases that I think success can be defined as a lot better than that definition from Mary Webster. So Winston Churchill said, success consists going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. I told you guys about plenty of failures as far as surgeries, but what I will tell you is I'm the biggest quitter you know. I don't believe in the whole thing of never give up, you just keep going, you really stink at something, you just try hard enough and you'll get it. No guys, that's not true. You quit at things that you're not great at, that you don't have a passion for. Now not everything, some things you just have to toughen up and get through. Okay? Schooling. Okay, I don't like math. Well, it doesn't matter. Get through it to the best you can, right? Learn math the best you can and move forward. It's, it's nobody's problem if you're not the best. I'm not gonna go be the amazing best at chemistry if I'm not gonna go become the chemist, all right? There's no reason for it. Stop doing it once the requirement's done and go pursue something that not only you're good at, but that you enjoy doing. I loved basketball. I'm also 5'3". I'm probably not gonna be great at basketball, especially not as a uh, blocker like I did this time. So I stopped doing that. Track, cross country, you guys saw me on there. I was great for a couple of years, my freshman, sophomore year, and then I matured, then I gained 35 pounds over a summer, and I was like, huh, I probably shouldn't do that anymore, right? I tried running a mile, and my time was like 10 seconds slower than it was before, and I was dying. And I was like, this not only is probably not good for my health, but I'm definitely not wanting to do this in college, so I should probably stop now. And that's when I started pursuing jujitsu. And gained a lot of muscle. I'd done like a workout with my little brother and he was, you know, starting to turn into a man too. And I was like, man, I, I gained a lot of weight and a lot of muscle. And puberty just hit me out of thin air. And in one summer, I gained like 30 pounds, right? And when I was a junior in high school, I was like, yep, I'm done. I'm done with cross country. I'm done with track. I'm done doing this running every single morning that I honestly hated, right? But I was good at it. So I loved it. And sometimes we have to do that. Become in your own mind, whatever you're good at, you wanna go pursue, right? That's how it should be. Don't just be absolutely miserable at something, but if you're good at it, maybe put some work into it. See if you can make that an actual successful thing for yourself. But I am a big quitter. I quit track, I quit cross country, I quit wrestling my senior year, you know why? Because I didn't go to college for it, and I was like, my goal was getting my college paid for. My parents were very upfront, like we're not helping you after high school. Like find a way. We'll help you if you really need it, but we're not gonna pay for your college. We're not gonna pay for your living. Good luck, right? And I was like, well that stinks, right? I better make sure I find a way to get to college. I definitely don't wanna be paying for it. I wanna be able to start putting money back, not spending money on college. So I quit in many, many things. I quit drawing for a while. I told you guys I was an artist. I quit all through college because I had to focus and prioritize my stuff. I prioritized on my college. I prioritized on making money and I prioritized my fighting. Satisfaction lies in the effort, not in the attainment. Full effort is the victory. So that's kind of what I was telling you guys too. It's not about the attaining of certain goals, it's how much effort you put in, right? Maybe your goal is to get straight A's. Like, well, I didn't have it, right? You're like, I got A's and B's and maybe you got C's, right? Or maybe you're getting really bad grades because you just don't give a crap and you think it's cool to not give a crap. I knew plenty of those people. It's not cool to not give a crap, guys, especially not when you're paying for college and you could have got it for free, all right? So focus on stuff that is important, should be important. Use full effort in everything that you do. I was actually talking over here to Miss Hill a little while ago and I was joking about my husband, right? He was doing something and I got grumpy about this little bitty thing when we first met. We were just dating and he's like, why do you get so mad about this tiny little thing? It doesn't even matter. And I'm like, well, how you do these little things is how you're gonna amp up on this big thing. If you don't care about this little bitty piece of laundry that you just threw in the corner, you're probably not gonna care about our child's piece of laundry someday. You're probably not gonna care about that little paragraph that you read in that loan that you signed and now we're, we are
are in trouble, right? Pay attention to little things, pay attention to big things. Everything matters, and putting your full effort into all of those things is what gets you to where you are. It is better to fail in originality than to succeed in imitation. A lot of days in society, we're just creating a lot of drones, right? Everybody's turning into the same, we have the same mindset. If you don't go along with the modern trends, then you're weird. If you don't go along with the modern trends, then nobody's really gonna pay attention to you, right? You gotta stand out and be unique to really get anywhere. But standing out and being unique doesn't necessarily mean you be that really creepy kid over in the corner and stuff. It means find yourself, find out who you're gonna be. Be a strong individual that stands out with your morals, with your values. Make a difference. That makes you different just as much as being a, a crappy kid does, right? Someone comes in and be like, I'll stand out. I'll be the one that went to jail more than anybody else in my county, right? No, that's not how we stand out, right? Stand out by being the best that you can be, making a difference in the way that you make a difference. Don't let everybody else tell you what you should be in life. You might have somebody that's like, you should go, um, I don't know, you should go be a nurse. It's like, well, I don't really like dealing with people. It's like, well, you should be a nurse. I don't want to do that. Then go do what you want to do. Make your difference. Be different. Don't just follow along with the status quo. If your kid, if your kid, sorry. If your friend's laughing about some terrible joke, right, and you're like, oh, that was really vulgar. I didn't really think it was that funny, but I'm gonna laugh anyway because it's cool to laugh about that kind of stuff. It's like that, that doesn't make you cool. That just makes you the same as everyone else. You're just an idiot following other idiots, right? You don't want to be that. You want to be a leader. Stand up for what's right. When you see someone doing something wrong, guess what? You won't be the cool kid anymore. I'll tell you that. I've done that plenty of times, right? Um, I have a couple people that might remember me getting slapped one time. I picked up the girl that slapped me, carried her in front of the coach, and like set her on the ground here at Waldron. I was like, she stole something. I'll probably deal with that. It's like, yeah, they were kind of my friend even before I got slapped in the face. But I tried to stand up for what was right. And guess what? I wasn't a cool kid anymore. Nobody wanted to be my friend anymore for a few weeks. They didn't even want to talk to me because they were like, man, Miranda kind of told on my friend. I'm like, no, I did what was right. My friend did the wrong thing. Do the right thing. It doesn't matter if you're disliked then, you will not regret your decisions later. I have people, uh, my brother, I'll talk about my brother a little bit. He got big trouble, got suspended for school for this. Okay, beat up a kid in school. And I don't know if he considered getting beat up. He stood up for what I think was right, but I think he went a little bit too far. He made a bad decision. There was another boy in wrestling, and he was wrestling, um, who started talking about my sister, didn't realize he was my brother's sister, right? Bad mistake. Started talking about her very vulgarly to my brother. And my brother was like, dude, shut up. Hey, dude, shut up, right? And he just kept talking. Got worse and worse. My brother was like, yeah, haha, ha, funny, funny. Yep, she's good looking, whatever it is. And afterwards, my brother's like, hey, you want to wrestle next round? The guy was like, sure, yeah, I'll wrestle. That'd be cool. Because my brother's a big kid. He was like, oh, that'd be cool to wrestle Brock. You know? Goes and wrestles with him. Gets a little bit beat up, just a little bit, right? Just bloody nose slammed against the wall, almost had his arm broke, and they all stop it, and they're like, what's going on? Brock's like, that was my sister. I told you to shut up. I tried to get you to stop. You didn't want to listen to me. Maybe don't talk bad about my sister or any other girls around here. He got suspended for seven days, I think it was, where my dad was like, oh great, you get a week off, you can be working at home. Bye bye me, I'm proud of you, right? We get home and always working, and he's like, I, I, he wouldn't tell me what he said, so I still to this day don't know exactly what was said. He's like, no, I never say that. But he became team captain of that wrestling team about two months later. He became very successful. He became runner up in the state. He stood up for what was right. And that same kid was like, two years later, was like, hey, to me, you're one of my best friends because you got me to really change how I was. Not just around you, but around other people. At first, out of fear. But then I noticed, like, that was probably the wrong thing to do. I shouldn't have been talking about that each other. <coughs> Sorry. You guys have to make sure that you stand up for what's right. It usually ends up paying off. And the people who don't think it's okay and they're like, yeah, you're still lame, it's 20 years and I still don't like you, like, great, then you probably didn't grow much as a person either. And then the other thing, there are two things that lead to success, inspiration or desperation. That one's from my dad. That's a quote that he told me and he's been telling me every day since I was old enough to remember. Two ways to reach success, desperation or inspiration, and you get to choose it, right? You may have a terrible life, and you can decide that I'm going to be so miserable and fall to the very bottom so far that my rock bottom forces me to go up. Cool. Then it's up from there. You can choose success that way, the miserable way, to where you fail ultimately, and then you choose to succeed. Or you can choose to succeed through inspiration. Watch other people. Watch 
the way you're supposed to do, right? See the inspiration that you could be. Watch other people. I'm not saying, ladies or guys, I'm not saying go be a USC fighter, then you'll be successful, you'll be great. I use Miranda as an inspiration. I hope that I just drive you to be better and succeed at whatever it is you want to do. If you want to be the best parent in the world someday, cool, then you are a success. If you want to be a great teacher someday, cool, then you are a success. Just because we're on a kind of platform or anything like that, if you make a difference in whatever it is you do, then you're being successful. Be a rebel, and not the kind you think I mean, right? joke about that because today in society, being a rebel is kind of about being a rebel and that's what that means, being honest, being a good person. But to me, it's having Christian moral code, right? To me, it's deciding that I don't want to date when I'm super young and I get made fun of for it. I had my first date when I was 22 years old. Second guy I ever dated, I'm married. And I'm not saying I didn't go on a mini date, so that's a different thing. I went on many dates and I was like, this person's not for me. This person's a pile of crap. This person said this, and I already know that's not gonna work out in the long run. I wouldn't hurt their feelings by hanging on and all that. I'd be like, hey, I don't think we're gonna work out, right? This or this didn't work for me. You have kids, I'm not okay with that, or um, you're not a Christian, sorry, I am, and that's a big value for me, that's probably won't work out. Or you think this way, so I don't like it, so we're probably not gonna work out, whatever it was. And the second guy that I decided to actually date, I ended up marrying, he's a good man, he's a great person, and it was because he had all these different values, right? He had integrity before anything else. Like, yeah, he could be a dork sometimes. He could do some dumb things, right? We all do. We all have mistakes. We all have sins. And for me, it's like those are all forgiven as long as your goal is to be that better person, as long as you have that passion to do something in your life and you're trying to improve every single day. And today, today in this world, having that drive and having that integrity not only will make you stand out probably already to be above your counterparts and people relative to you, but it'll make you be a better person in here, and that's better than most people nowadays are. And honestly, society drives us to be a worse person than what we see on television and stuff like that. Everything that's bad, technically, is encouraged and considered cool. All the way from dating to drinking to, I don't know, to how you treat bosses and teachers and people in general. Another thing is not being entitled. Oh, I got treated bad, or I grew up in a bad household, I should get, I should get all these things. And retribution, right? It's like that's not how it works. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps, as they say, right? Find a way to be successful by doing what you can to be successful. It doesn't matter what hand we're dealt in life. You can still choose the way that you want to be. Don't be entitled. Don't be like, I'm not going to listen to that teacher. I'm going to stay over here and talk and laugh all I want until they physically come move me. It's retarded. It's not funny, guys. It's not funny. It's not cool. Especially not when you get fired from work because of it. You go, oh crap, maybe I should have listened back then because now there's real consequences. Just because there aren't real consequences yet doesn't mean there won't be. And I'm very glad that I had a strict childhood that taught me that very fast. And then by the age of like eight, I didn't think it was strict anymore. I'd see other kids and I'd be like, oh, they got grounded. Mm, that sucks. Glad my dad doesn't ground me. He just had me do a few push ups here and there and then I'm good, right? And I learned to listen real fast because the consequences hurt a lot worse immediately, but the consequences in the end were so much better. So much better because I had a parent who was protected, overprotected, and I would actually listen. Now I knew times when I would be a rebel and be like, my dad's a jerk. So I'd call him every name in my head, be like, I'm gonna run away, I'm gonna do this. You know what, I'm gonna do this because he doesn't like it. And that never paid off very well. And definitely my decisions weren't the good ones. Right? And I'm, I'm glad that I had the parents I did. But not only that, I had friends that were always telling me to do the bad stuff. Right? They'd be like, you should sneak out. You should come out here and go to this party. Like, Why would I sneak out? One, if I got caught, oh my goodness, consequences would be terrible. But two, why would I do that to my dad? He loves me. I know he's trying to do the best for me, even if I don't think that's what's best. Even if, honestly, he's wrong and it's not the best. You guys will figure out in probably five, ten, maybe even 30 years from now if you have kids, you'll figure out that your parents were just children themselves. They're just trying the best they can, usually, raising you. If your parents are actually decent and you're thinking in your head, well, you know, they aren't the best parents, but they try. It's like, cool, they try. One day you're gonna be trying too, going, man, I wish my kids would just understand how hard this life is. I'm trying to pay for stuff, I'm trying to do a job, and I'm trying to raise them, this is a struggle. And I learned really fast. Well, my dad was like 20 when he had me, no, or no. Yeah, 20 when he had me, and I'm like, I'm 26 and I'm not even thinking about that. Yeah, that's crazy.
crazy to me. I'm like, he was literally my age when, from the time I can like remember. You know what I mean? Like I remember my dad, and I'm like, he would have been my age. And I'm sitting over here going, Jesus, I don't even want kids. Like I can't imagine having to raise a child right now, not to mention three children, right? Because we did great. We did great for who he was and what he was able to do for us. We have choices. We don't choose the circumstances, but we can choose how to respond. However, you respond to your bad situation, right? You can choose to just wallow in it and be like, well, this is the hand I've been dealt in life. This is where I'm going. I'm already 18 years old, and I've been in jail once, or I've been arrested, or I've gotten caught drinking, or this and that. I think that's just who I'll make my life. You can change any time. You can change right now. You can decide to be a better person. If you're goody two-shoes and you're like, I haven't done anything wrong. We've all done something wrong. And if you can't find that you've done something wrong, then you probably aren't actually goody two-shoes, right? I was that person. People were like, oh, you think you're so good. I'm like, no, I don't think I'm good. I'm not good. I'm not good now. I've, I've made bad mistakes in life. I've made mistakes I would never say out loud, right? I've done a lot of bad things. I'm like, man, I look back and go, who was that? What was I doing? Somebody should have whooped my butt. I wish somebody would have came up and punched me in the face. It would have been a lot better than the consequences I got instead. Figure out if you want to deal with those consequences or if you want to choose the right way to respond to your situation. If you want to choose to make them better. If you want something, are the consequences worth the wants, right? I've had people where I'm like, man, I wish they'd be way nicer to me. I wish this person would be more involved in my life. There was a friend one time, she was a terrible friend. She was into this at the time. She was really cool. I thought she was like that girl. Everybody liked her, and she would go out to the parties and have all this stuff going on. And I was like, man, I just want to be her friend. And I became her friend. And it was not great. I was like, why did I want to be her friend? Right? It took me into very bad situations. My life was in danger a couple times from these things. Like I left at parties by myself, didn't have a vehicle back, and I was like, this friend got me here, and I'm the one who wanted that to happen. And here I am going, please, Lord, take this friend back. I want this friend. I don't want to be a friend anymore. Right? Be careful what you ask for because you might get what you want, and it's not actually what you want. So how do we reach our dreams? Um, guys, this is going to stay a little shorter than what you wanted it to be. I'm going to do some question and answers at the end, so I'll let this slide sit here for a second while I'm talking about it. You guys think about a couple questions. It can be about my life. Um, it can be different things. And afterwards, I'm going to give some time if you guys want to take pictures and stuff. So just be thinking about some questions that you have. Keep them appropriate and serious. Are you a bodybuilder? I said in a second. All right, so how do we reach our dream? One is having a support system, right? A really healthy support system. And you get to choose that support system, just like I said. Some of us want certain friends because they're cool and everything, but some support systems aren't exactly the support system we thought we wanted, right? Find people who are going to be in your close circle who want the absolute best for you. And find your out, right? Find something for your mental health. Nowadays, mental health is a big thing. I know I've struggled with it myself. You guys will probably struggle with it if you're not already. Find things that help you with that. For me, it's that drawing, right? I take my time, I go sit down, and I draw to get relaxed a little bit. I go, and I go for a hike just to clear my mind. Um, I'll read my books. Sometimes I'll just talk, talk to somebody and get it out. Sometimes I'll write it down. I love writing down the worst things ever and then just shredding it and throwing it away. I mean, like, there we go. There was the bad, intrusive thoughts I had. I got it on a piece of paper, and now I'm done with it. Find a way that helps you with your mental health. Um, I struggled a lot until I had someone that I could start talking to. I was always too embarrassed to tell my parents about it. I was like, that just makes me weak, that I have this high anxiety, this, this high stress. Like, I was trying to go do so much, and I had these high expectations, and I was like, I'll never reach them. I'll never reach my dreams. And I was so worried about it all the time that I let myself get so stressed that I would struggle. Um, and set high standards for yourself. There is nothing wrong with setting high standards that seem stupid to everyone else. I told somebody when I was 18 years old, I told another UFC fighter, Cowboy Cerrone, I said, sir, I will be where you are in less than two years. And he said, yeah, I've heard that one before. I said, ah, I'm sure you have, but I mean it. He said, yeah, okay, we'll see. Guess what, it took me three and a half years. Three and a half years, and I saw him while we were at the UFC fighting on the same card, and I said, sir, do you remember me? And he said, no, I don't. <laughs> and I was like, that's fine, I met you at this fight, this time. I was like, I told you I'd be here in two years. It wasn't two years, you were right, but I made it. He was like, wow, I'm really proud of you, you did. And that's all, it wasn't for his recognition, but it was for me to know I might have reached for those super high standards, for that moon, 
but I fell among the stars. I fell somewhere up there. I might have reached too high, but I fell somewhere great, and I was very happy with myself at that point. Work harder than anyone else in the room. You'll get somewhere. Work harder than anyone else. You may not be the best. You may not be better than them just naturally, but you can work harder than everyone else and get yourself higher. Be adaptable, and I don't mean with society's trends. I mean with the situations, the opportunities put in front of you. Be ready to change. Be ready to focus on that opportunity. If I'm talking to you guys, I'm going to talk different than I do to a potential sponsor. I'm going to talk different than I do to my siblings, right? Be adaptable. Learn to deal with different people different ways. And gratitude, number one above all things, is gratitude. Okay. Have gratitude. Be thankful for the people that are put in front of you. Be grateful for the bad situations that you've been put in. Because one day you're going to look and be like, man, that gave me grit. That gave me character. That gave me who I am today. That's it, guys.